I'm Peggy Oleslagers, and it's time for B Motion Connects. Today I'm in dialogue with Liam Francis, and I met him years ago when we were both working at Rombert. Rombert is the oldest dance company uh, from the UK and a leading contemporary dance company in Europe. Liam is still dancing there, uh, and I was working as an artistic associate. Uh, working with Mark Baldwin, the artistic director at that time, from 2015 to 2019. We stayed in contact, Liam and me, and uh, we are discussing his, his personal practice these uh, last months. Uh, him being a writer uh, and being a facilitator next to being a dancer. In this conversation, we will discuss equality and togetherness, and I hope that you enjoy it. Let's let's start and let me ask uh, you first to introduce yourself. Okay, fun. So um, I'm Liam. Uh, I had thought already about how I was going to introduce myself and because you know I struggle with these things. And yeah, so I'm a dancer, or I dance, I choreograph, I write, I facilitate, and I kind of felt like in that, it's all linked to being involved in ideas. And I really just enjoy the world of materializing ideas through whichever avenue that is. I'm I dance for a company here in London, a uh, contemporary dance repertoire company here in London where I've been for six years, but that's not the only thing I do. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so you dance for uh, an established company. Is that something that happened to you or did you choose to, to go for that path? Um, I think it happened. Yeah. And then I, it, it was happening and I chose, I guess I chose for it to happen. Um, it's interesting. I feel like I had a career as a commercial dancer before. I worked in like a hip hop company called Zoo Nation Dance Company. Um, and then I worked as a commercial dancer, uh, which was just another world entirely, kind of on television, behind artists. And then when I was training professionally and, or started training professionally from like 18 to 21, doing the like, serious dance techniques. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I kind of shifted into wanting to work in the contemporary dance world. Uh -huh. As I was graduating, it was just I wanted to go for the biggest company that I knew of. And I was like, I want that one. I want to go there. And I just try and kind of did everything I could to go there. And it's interesting when you start to think about why that was on my radar. Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting. It's taken me a few years to step back and go, "I'm here. Why did I want to be here? Uh -huh. Was it really my choice?" Which is interesting when you ask, yeah. "Did it happen to you, or did you, or did you do it?" Because I realize a lot of it did happen to me, and it's kind of when you're in that world, this is there's a hierarchy, so you want to go for the top, as it were, and then. When you're here, it takes you some time to work out why am I here? What can I do whilst I'm here? Being here isn't enough to just be here. It felt like, especially if that's not a decision you've made that has had other people's opinions and influences involved, you mm -hmm. arrive and it's like, okay, I've arrived at this place where people told me it'd be really good to be. I need to make this good for myself. Just being in this place doesn't, automatically make it good. There's an effort involved in making it the place you want to be. Can, can you elaborate on that a little bit further? So what is the effort that you need to kind of develop in addition to being there? Because being there in itself is labor, no? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Labor. yeah. So what is the extra work that, that you have started to put in? So the extra... I think the extra work is finding yourself or finding myself 
again in new space and yeah finding myself in a new space and realizing okay in this environment what tools do i have what can i offer uh what don't i want to agree with what yeah. don't I agree with and not just being there as a vessel for all the information to kind of just go through uh wanting to decide or, or just deciding that there are some things that are important to me and my mission that perhaps aren't part of the mission of the institution I'm in and realizing where I can piggyback with the institution to uh -huh. find my way to my mission or decide actually this is something I have to do separately this is some work I have to do separately whether that is writing for like a peer-reviewed journal to say there are things I want to say, there are things I'm interested in pursuing. This perhaps isn't the space to do it. So mm. in, that, in that moment, being here where I am in the institution isn't enough because there are still other things that need nurturing. So I need to find other ways of nurturing them and other avenues for those outlets rather than just assuming that being here is enough because it asks for a lot of you without asking you what it is you want. And this nice. is... I think this is really interesting. And uh, now that I've just said it, like I want to say it again, like they ask a lot of you without asking what you want. And that can be tiring. And that's a balance. I feel that in the last three years, I've really started to take control of and say, no, this is what I want. I will do this for us as well, because it's not, I'm part of it. This isn't for you, for the institution. This is for us because we're all involved here but there are things that I need to do for me. When I ask my questions, what do, when I ask myself my questions, what do I want to do? I can't fulfill or answer all of those questions just by being here doing as you are setting out for me to do. Great. So, you know, we're talking about equality these mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. um, listening to you, is that an important element of equality that you know your own agenda let's say that you're striving uh for your own uh goals yes yeah i think it is um it's an, it's an equality that i feel like i have to give myself permission to access because by there is the notion that like well, I feel, this is the thing, it's interesting, like, I feel like it exists, is that to be here is to be of service to mm. what is in front of me, what is around me, what's in the walls, what decisions are being made from above my head. It's like I am serving. And that puts me in the position of the server, like I'm, I'm serving rather than always being decided what it is is being served and I guess that is for me helping me establish my my own equality within what I'm in control of saying mm -hmm. okay I can be serving here but I can also decide when I'm the person in charge of what needs service and that is an equality that I feel quite often links to purpose and also I have to re-establish or re-address um, when I feel that uncomfortable, frustrated, yeah, annoyance at everything that is being like, we need you to do this, this needs to be done. This, and sometimes it is explicit, it is told, sometimes it's not, it's just there, it's in the walls, it's like, this thing is needed from you. No one says it, it literally comes through the walls. And it's um, when that happens and that becomes overwhelming, that's when I feel like, yeah, I need to strike my, I, I, need, I need to do what I can to find the equality here, which is to operate outside. So I'm being nourished in more than one way. I'm yeah. being fed in more than one way. Yeah. Hey, and, and feel, do you feel extra 
pressure, let's say, to respond to the questions brought to you because, you, because of the fact that you are seen by some, or more than some, as a dancer of color. As in, do I feel a responsibility to respond to questions regarding inequality within the company? No, I think I, I, I first suggest to perhaps the kind of uh, feeling that you have to behave, that you have to live up to expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, because that is something that, that friends and colleagues of mine told me, that that was part of a kind of upbringing almost that they had to say goodbye to in order to, to get to a place where you seem to be already. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely have. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting because I want to link it. I feel like I want to link it to my, to my personality, which is that has elements of patience and tolerance. But I'm also aware that in situations, patience and tolerance can, for someone else, become a virtue because I'm not responding. Mm. So, or I'm not, I haven't chosen to respond yet. Mm. Or, um, so it gives space for activity, action, around without me confronting it. And I feel, I was thinking earlier, actually about my journey into the company and thinking that I always felt like, until again, quite recently, this is maybe within the last year, perhaps I've always felt like an underdog. Like I had a lot of work to do, um, that I was working from the bottom, from the back, and I had a lot of catching up to do. And I think that does do something to your, when you mentioned about like um, silencing your ability to respond, it can be tricky. And I found it tricky because like, I've just got so much work to do as me. I've got so much work to do to feel like I'm equal in this, um, in this arena with the other dancers here, that actually to be responding is energy that I could expend on pushing myself towards being seen as equal, but it's a real conundrum because hmm. one is serving me and me becoming equal within a group of people and the ability to respond and the action of responding is wider. Yeah. In consideration of more than just myself. Yeah. And it's interesting when you feel like you're in a position where you have a lot of work to do, quite often, if that's the rhetoric or the kind of energy, that becomes your focus. Mm -hmm. right? And I feel that did become my focus. If you can convince someone that you as an individual have a lot of work to do, you may not focus on the bigger picture. Yeah. And I, I, and that definitely has happened to me. And I feel like I'm now in a place where I'm realizing I've done my work. Perhaps I focus too hard on my work when there's work that we can all do that maybe we should all start pointing out saying, no, wait, that, that can be done. And that pointing that out doesn't mean that I'm now going to invest all my energy in doing that work. That is then someone else's job to rectify that problem, not mine. And I think that's the, the thing is like, if you feel like, I have felt that if I'm going to point out a problem and respond, it's then my job to fix as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you are the messenger, it's not your responsibility to solve yeah. things, by the yeah, way. Exactly. Because are you referring to inequality in the world of dance or the world right now in relation to race and color? Is that what you're referring to? Or are you yeah. referring to other things? Yeah, so uh, I think the issue of race and color within the dance institution and the dance community. There feels, there feels like there, it feels like there are missions that you have to go on as an individual, or I felt like there were missions I had to go on as an individual, that when I look at it more broadly, it's like, wait, we could, we could have all addressed that. Yeah. And then I wouldn't have had to feel like it was my mission personally. We could have said, 
there are a few missions here going on that people don't need to be on. Can we do something about that? Yeah. So and do we do we need a certain collaboration for this? Yes. Practice yeah, I, the togetherness, let's say. Yes. And I think this is something actually in the company now that the company has put into place is this collaborative working group of that, that exists for dancers of color. Anyone in the company who is a person of color is a member of this community that is a support group. It is a action group that has direct access to the powers of the company. And it's really wonderful to have it now because again, you feel like, okay, these are some of the things that I can say, then we deliver it. And those people in charge of delivering change are then in charge of delivering that change. Just because I have the problem doesn't mean I have to solve it. And I think quite often that is the, um, the feeling that I have had is that if I have a problem, I have to deal with it. And if I'm already dealing with the stuff that I'm dealing with, it's like, I don't have enough energy to start dealing with something else. Yeah. And yeah. So, but then when you but, look at it, the problem I'm dealing with is a problem that I could, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but still you find time because you know, uh, we know each other. We talked about this yes, yes, yes. a lot of times. Uh, you, you started to develop a practice in which you engage yourself in dialogues with peers, you know, as, as, a, as the organizer, as the moderator. Mm -hmm. So why is, was this important for you to develop that additional personal practice next to your work as a dancer and as an activist dancer also? Why, why is that important for you? Because... I think all of the things that I have done whilst I've been at where I am in this company have been um, to increase my sense of purpose. So when, when you feel like you're on the wheel, which sometimes mm -hmm. it does, these are all things I have to say, wait, or I, I have said, wait, I feel very much on a wheel. I feel like I've lost my sense of purpose slightly and then i want to i have to readdress what it is i want what my interests are right now what my ideas are and pursue one of them to make sure that i have some extra purpose and for me for instance this one that i'm working on at the moment this kind of facilitating workshop discussion um beast that i've created that is a really wonderful project that i'm extremely passionate about is important for me because it focuses quite specifically on the those shared experiences that exist amongst us all so it's kind of like a psychological um it focuses on like psychological hurdles and um yeah the psychological hurdles involved in being a creator involved in being an artist. Can, and, you, can you give an, an example of, of yes. something that you discussed? Because for me, it is beautiful that you engage yourself in these conversations as an important part of your work, because it seems that it also fuels your work because it kind of gives you a, a clearer image of your purpose, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. So can you give us an example of what on earth you discuss in these this meetings? What on earth we discuss? Yeah. So, um, the one for me that has been the most powerful that has kind of led me to continue developing sessions to dig deeper um, is when we spoke about the this notion of imposter syndrome. So this idea that no one really feels like they know what they're doing or they're good enough to do it. And it was amazing because there were in this, in the, in the first conversation, there were dancers, composers, writers, musicians. Um, there was a director and we're all and varied in age range. Some had just graduated from school. Some were in their like mid forties, fifties, uh, and then all in between and we're talking about this and we realize no matter where you are or where we were as a group we all had this same little thing like nagging 
at the back of our head that was when we step into space feeling especially when we're leading feeling unsure of ourselves and as if everyone knows we don't know what we're doing that everyone's thinking he doesn't know what he's doing and whilst i was leading this session i was having that wave of everyone was looking at me thinking why is he doing this he doesn't know what he's doing what has qualified him to do this and it was a really wonderful exercise just the discussions picking it apart working out where it's come from working out what we do to encourage it what we allow how we allow it to grow mm -hmm. when, when we don't shut it down mm -hmm. So, so, so Liam, was it healing in that sense? Was yes. it? Yes. Yeah, did, you, did it give you a higher level of well-being, let's say? Yes. And yeah, this is the really wonderful thing about it, which, which is why I feel right now is really something important that I pursue because it really created a sense of equality amongst us all. It was like, no matter how old you are, no matter what color you are, in that room, we're all struggling with this one thing. And this is our mind and this is like a uh, a human wellness issue that we're talking about so, so Liam, Liam, do we need to look for shared pain and traumas then in order to find equality <laughs> yeah i i think there's something in in recognizing them in finding shared vulnerability in recognizing you struggle with this so do I. And this is why the project's important to me because I want to, what I've started doing is delivering this, after we had this initial discussion, I developed, I started developing a workshop that kind of really delves into um, artists really unpicking what I call the artistic gremlins that we have in our head. So when we're, when we're at work and we're creating, performing, brainstorming, leading, what's that nasty little voice behind you that is like, this isn't great. Who qualifies you to do this? Are people going to want to watch this? And I've noticed that most of us so far, so far everybody, I don't want to say everyone because I haven't interviewed everyone and worked with everyone, but everyone I've worked with have these. And whether, I mean, I interviewed someone who has over five Grammys, like, and he was telling me that he has this real sense of insecurity when he's performing like he doesn't feel like he's enough um he feels a burden on those he's performing with because his skill level is too low and i'm like you have five grammys that's that says you're really good at what you're doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the fact that you still have these struggles and you're sharing those with me mm -hmm. make me feel like there, there's there, there's an equality between us yeah, so it seems because you use the word vulnerability. Yes, yeah. For me, it's also interesting that it seems that you talk about insecurity with your peers. Yeah. Or doubt. Yes. Is that something that is, are we referring to human quality now, doubt? Or are we referring to insecurity as something we should get rid of as artists? No, I don't, I don't think this is at all like, I think it's a human quality. Mm. And I think we... As artists, perhaps we are more, I feel, perhaps we're more, we're more comfortable stepping into that vulnerability because perhaps we're aware of the benefit that it can be to us. Um, I know personally, I often find art performing quite uh, cathartic. Mm -hmm. So knowing that I step into knowing that when I step into a space, I'm going to create something that I can go on a journey with and will feed me means that I'm quite open to sharing a level of vulnerability. Mm. I think that's quite common amongst artists. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really, th there's a real opportunity there to go further, to share with the people who are in charge of making the art, in charge, in, I mean, an opportunity in them sharing their vulnerability with us so when we're in the collaboration there is even more sense of equality not only amongst those who are the performers but amongst all of us involved if you're a creator however you're involved whether the, whether you're a director or a choreographer if there's a if there is an ability to share 
a vulnerability, a level of vulnerability and insecurity and doubt as a human, we take that into our art, the environment that we're in, and there feels like there's more equality between us all because we're all a bit more open and showing mm -hmm. the human side of ourselves rather than being in a position where you haven't showed these vulnerabilities, thus in a position of power and make other people feel like others. And you make people who have shown their vulnerability others. And this is a thing that we see in society. Those who are perhaps more willing to express or wanting to express themselves and it's different to the majority, you become an other. And I feel like there's this, um, if there was, if there is a greater sharing of vulnerability, then we understand that within each of us and one another, mm -hmm. there is a commonality. Hey Liam, um, is this a practice that needs to happen in a live environment or can you also do this in a digital, uh arena via instagram uh, or is this really a practice that needs to happen in a shared space and time in a life situation mm -hmm. it is something that i have experienced or experimented with during the lockdown uh over zoom so i have shared these uh these sessions with people over zoom and it's it's really interesting people's willingness again to be vulnerable to a computer yeah with all these other people with all these other little squares um but still but still liam zoom at least you know yes yeah, yeah. very true yeah because i'm i'm asking you this because if i'm in dialogue with colleagues my age and older mm -hmm. sometimes in this conversation uh, somebody starts to talk about the, the pressure that they see uh, is on uh, the youngest generation of, of colleagues because mm. of, uh, uh, to a certain degree, the ongoing invitation to be visible on social media and to respond. And you mm. said that you, you believe that you are patient, that you mm. know how to wait. Is that a quality that you, can, you still can embrace in this time in which the society seems to ask you for responses, responses, or is it something that you don't feel at all? Is it a cliche? <laughs> That's a good question. I feel like I don't, especially with this work, I don't feel a, um, a pressure to be responsive, to cool. share, because in the work that I've experienced, through the mediums with which I'm delivering it, the result is rich enough for me and really offers me a sense of purpose that I no longer feel that pressure to be responsive, to share, to um, promote and push. But I recall when we had an earlier conversation and yeah. we talked about that we have the right to wait. You yeah. said, yeah, heck, we have the right to wait, but we have to show solidarity. You recall yeah. that? Yes, I do. Yes, and then, I do. you know, we started yes, to elaborate on that. So you say, well, I don't feel any pressure yet, but you were very strong with me at that moment. You said, but we have to show solidarity. So yes. how do you do that then? Well done. Well done. Yeah. Well done. No, yeah. yeah, I said it. I know I said it. Um, I guess this feels like I'm going back on what I said now, but there is a, <laughs> there is an element of it. That's that, allowed, eh? Yeah. That's yeah, allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. I guess there is an element of me that is wanting to share it and is going to share it. This is something that is in the pipeline. So I guess that is the element of solidarity because I, it's something that I want to share and make accessible to as many people as possible. But whilst in the, the working time of it, whilst I'm finessing and building, I feel like I'm 
I'm showing solidarity um, within, within my circle, people within my community, my immediate community, those really close to me as artists and friends are being affected by it as because I involve them that seeps out to the next layer which, in which I'm engaging with people to deliver mm. the session. So I feel like there is this solidarity, but it's very close. And I'm wanting to, um, I don't want to say finesse, but I'm wanting to build the strength of that, the power of that before it is something that I um, share more widely because yeah. I want the message and the essence to be rich and potent and strong rather than a I'm sharing for share's sake. I'm sharing because this has power. Yeah. Rather cool. than just trying to be present. Like I want to share with power rather than just a need to be present and there doing something. Is it important for you to be influential? Hmm. Because you used the word power. Yeah. And you lost yeah. the yeah. yeah, I think I think it is. I think it's important for me to feel like I'm it's important for me to feel like I'm breaking new ground mm. for myself. And I guess I will never know whether that's breaking new ground for other people. But I want to break new ground for myself and share. Um, so I guess it is. I guess it is important for me to be influential because I'm aware that I'm also in, in regards to like an artist, I'm in quite a privileged, privileged position being in a company, uh, having the support of a company, having the stability of a company, it feels important to me that I utilize that in a way that can benefit people who perhaps aren't able to experience that privilege themselves, that there will be a resonance, there will be a result of that privilege that extends beyond those in that privileged institution box thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I feel you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you be authentic all the time in your work? Because that was a, a word that popped up in different conversations that I had the last weeks. I need to be authentic in order to do this work. Can you be authentic all the time? I mean, and I don't know your definition of authenticity because that's yeah. another interview, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> this question. I think authenticity again is linked to this thing that feels really important to me at the moment is which is purpose mm. like if, if i'm able to my authenticity i feel will change regardless in regardless it's, it's going to change in regards to what situation i'm in so my purpose uh when i'm doing this choreographer's work and i'm working on a creation period is very different to when i'm perhaps on tour to when I'm on holiday, to when it's a weekend, when it's a work day. Um, yeah, yeah, but let me stop you for a moment because yeah. I know you already for years and I know yeah. that you, under the, the, that specific purpose, you have a deeper purpose mm -hmm. that, you, that you, you try to stay connected to. And I think in this conversation, we talk a lot about that deeper purpose. You know, yeah. why are you on earth? So yeah. is that the key to authenticity? that you feel that that deeper purpose uh, is able to kind of echo through all your different activities or is it something else? No, then no, my answer is no. Because I feel like I, I have, again, like we've discussed, I have my deeper purpose, which is, I feel now is very much channeled into my extra projects, my little baby that I have. This feels like where my deeper purpose is. So, and I guess what I was trying to say is that, okay, when I'm not with this, when I'm in a different environment, when I can't be attached to 
something that I feel um, exemplifies my purpose right now, I have to reestablish what my purpose is here. So say, okay, so right now, this is what I'm having to do. How can I do this in a way that also nourishes me and helps me connect to a sense of purpose that I am here for a reason that is beyond that of just fulfilling someone else's um, vision again. So finding a way for myself so that I feel, try and feel topped up, which is mm -hmm. how, yeah, it's how I think of it. Like feeling, yeah, topped up and in good spirit <laughs> and not frustrated. But it's beautiful how you describe it. Yeah, it's clear, it's clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, it seems that, you know, our conversation is almost round because we're touching again something that we started to talk about in the beginning, no? If I say the word equality out loud, uh, yes. once more, uh, are there some things that you really want to add to that specific word? Things that, that we didn't touch yet. So equality. Mm hmm Other things I want to add. I think I expressed kind of the, I think I have expressed the things that I feel quite personally attached to right now. So this idea of finding common ground which doesn't mean ignoring the other work that has to be done. It doesn't mean ignoring uh, the leveling that needs to be done. But for me, I find, and perhaps this is because it is slightly um, ignorant. As I said, as I think about it, it has like this sense of ignorance. There's like, I, I want to operate in a world, uh, a world, I mean like my own little world that I create with this workshop that is focusing on finding these elements, essences in which we are already equal and, and we're closer to equal and harnessing these moments, strengthening these, bringing attention to these, in a bid to hopefully create a wider expanding sense of equality. So starting with, so recognizing a place where we are equal and expanding from there, trying to affect the areas that we aren't by reminding ourselves and others, but at the core, there's human. So, so what is ignorant about that, Liam? Because um, I feel, Perhaps because it's interesting, like I feel like perhaps because I'm not creatively attached to leveling. It feels ignorant because I'm picking a area where equality already exists and trying to expand it. Perhaps if that makes sense, rather than recognizing an area where equality doesn't exist and working to find that or being active in finding that balance or being creative because I feel like I am active there but my cre my creativity lies in the realms of exploring where we are already or I feel like we're closer to equality and expanding that out rather than putting pouring my creativity which is a link to purpose perhaps into efforts and situations where we're not equal and trying to level them. Does that make sense? Yeah, is that your next chapter that you're going to facilitate conversations, bringing in the same questions, but then with people who perhaps think that they are less connected or equal because they are not all artists, they are not all living in London, yes. they are not all Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Is that something that is is somewhere there already, or or do you think no, Peg, other people to do that? Your call, for instance. No, no. <laughs> part of my work. <laughs> no, I I mean this is this is something that I'm that, that that is extremely important to me. I'm working 
at the moment really hard to establish a network of people from really varying uh, experiences in art. Also, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's to do with the amount of time they've been there. People who have more experience, people who have less experience, people who are in institutions, people who aren't in institutions, people who have, you know, been, like I was saying, people who have won awards and are kind of glorified, and also people who are just leaving about, or just starting education, starting their, like, a, I say, yeah, what do you call it? Like the official artist training, whatever it is that like, yeah. And, and, and creating these connections. So there's a real kind of, okay, this seems really far away, but there are commonalities to cool. really try and bridge that gap of, um, what I'm hoping it will do is, it will bridge that, um, or it will start to remedy, remedy that issue of, you don't look like me, so I can't do it. Rather than, you don't look like me, but wait, you have a really similar vulnerability to me. Mm. So there is a commonality between us. Yeah. So through, in, through recognizing this, maybe yeah. there can be even more similarities between us. Like cool. I can achieve what you have achieved without looking like you. Yeah. Because we share a vulnerability as a starting point still, even though you're in that position, which reminds me that you're human and you're also human. You're, cool. we, we're both human. Yeah. Beautiful. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, so finding, okay, humanity, finding humanity within. Yes. Everything. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Oh, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. it, took, it took a while. <laughs> I was like, no, but I. Yeah. Yeah, but come on, this is us also thinking out loud, no? Yeah, it is definitely yeah. thinking out yeah. loud. <laughs> and uh, I'm really happy that you, you joined me for this conversation because, again, you know, we have conversations on a regular basis, but <laughs> this was a little bit more official, eh? This was very official, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, I'm really grateful that people, a lot of people, hopefully, will be able to, uh, to hear our conversation that we had. Thank you so much for making me think out loud, which isn't new, but... Yeah, you do that a lot. But again, it's, it's really wonderful to, to have thoughts and then have thoughts on thoughts.